Pretty much every time an NBA 2K game launches, I hop on the game, try and get as much information as possible so that I'm creating the most overpowered build in the game. This year, it's pretty hard to come by information, so I've been trying my best to get as much as I can. And in the process of doing so, I've come across some builds with a variety of different play styles that I think are gonna be the best builds when NBA 2K19 fully launches. So, let's get into it. The first build, and credits to Davis on this one because he sent me the screenshots, is a Playmaker Primary Sharpshooter Secondary. This was a popular build last year so I thought it was gonna see some nerfs because they were trying to balance the game but this build is the only build in the game six foot four and under where not only do you have a great three-point rating you have silver shooting badges but on top of that you can speed boost off rip and you don't have to break attribute caps and upgrade your player to do it so you can be a dribble head with a good three-point shot now we don't know what the defense is looking like on this build but if you're an offensive oriented guy and you like to handle the ball without a doubt this is your build and chances are one out of every three point guards will be using a build like this. It's gonna be popular, you'll see it everywhere. I would recommend reducing your wingspan because this year wingspan makes a dramatic difference in your attribute category. And uh, who was it? Grizzly sent me this tweet here. 6'4 shooting guard, sharpshooting playmaker, which is a playmaker primary, sharpshooter secondary. It gets an 86 ball control immediately. And he was scrolling through and it's kind of pixelated because Twitter video sucks. But if you look closely, it says open shot 379. 79. If you reduce it from 6'4 to 6'3 with the minimum wingspan, you jump up to an 80. Shout out to NBA 2K Lab. These guys do the most for the community and they just came out with a badge comparison website. I'm going to leave a link in the description if you guys want to play around with it, but I'm going to use it for this video just to show you why I think some builds will dominate. We go point guard, playmaker, primary, sharpshooter, secondary, update the badges. So obviously you get all the playmaker badges on gold. It includes ankle breaker, break starter, pick and roll, maestro, and of course, probably the most important one, Dimer. But more importantly, not only do you get an 83 point shot, which by the way is impressive considering 7-3 pure stretch bigs with max wingspans have a 71 open shot three. You will have a three point rating 10 higher than a pure stretch that's 7-3 with the max wingspan. So of course you get the silver shooting badges, includes the limitless range and corner specialist, but you also get mid-range dead eye, tireless scorer, difficult shots, and I was hoping catch and shoot was silver and it's bronze, and that's unfortunate. That might have been their way to try and balance the game because had it had catch and shoot on silver, it would have taken the already OP to another tier. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the do-it-all offensive build. We don't know what it's like on defense yet, but I, I'm gonna make one myself. And I'm gonna leave Davis's link in the description. He made a build video. You can click that and watch his video if you wanna know more information, but let's move on. So the next archetype is actually two archetypes and I'm having trouble deciding between the two. So I'm gonna put them in the badge comparison and we'll make a decision together. Depending on your play style, one of these builds will make sense. And again, is at the guard position. Both of these are point guards. One is a pure shot creator and the other one is a shot creator primary, playmaker secondary. If you liked your pure shot creator last year, I'm just being honest, it looks like pure shot creators are back and better than ever to the point where I don't even like shot creators, but I'm really considering making one. Off rip, you get the four Hall of Fame badges you'd expect, tireless scorer, difficult shots, which is one of the best badges in the game, mid-range deadeye, and teardropper. Teardropper is specifically important, if you remember, because Mike Wang said you can do teardrops off spin moves and euros this year. So if you're a really good player, you're gonna find incredible, you're gonna find a lot of creative ways to use that badge to your advantage. Of course, there's the acrobat, the up and under. Whoa, what? Why do shock traders get up and under specialists? Shouldn't that be a post-score thing and they get it on gold? I'm so confused right now. The reason I put this build on the list is because of the silver badges. For whatever reason this year, they gave pure shot creators all of the sharpshooter badges on silver. They got corner specialist on silver, limitless range on silver, catch and shoot on silver, and then lob city finisher on silver. So of course, you're gonna be finishing the ball well, not as good as a slasher, but well. You're gonna be able to handle the ball because you're a shot creator, and you can fade coming off of screens so you don't even need much space to get open. But on top of that, this build, depending on the height you make it, but between 6'3 to 6'4, you're looking at between a 74 to a 72 open shot three. That's not a great rating, but that's definitely something you can work with. I thought it was gonna be in the high 60s. So I'm just saying, if you've been a shot creator kind of guy, you're gonna love this build, I can tell. So the shot creating primary playmaker secondary, I'm not as big of a fan of, but because of the just sheer amount of badges and attributes, it might make sense. 
Now, my thinking is that since shooting is gonna be harder this year in the playground and in the Pro-Am, if you have a build without sharp shooting, like, I, like if, if, if you have a 70 open shot three, but you won't even really have the shooting badges the way the Pure Shot Creator has the shooting badges, you might benefit from like pick and roll maestro gold, but that's coming off screens. What about times where you're not coming off screens? They're both really good. I just think I would rather have the Pure Shot Creator over the shot maker. That's really dope, I didn't even know they did that. They compare the amount of Hall of Fame, gold, silver, and bronze badges to one another. The next build, and this one should come obvious, you should have seen it coming, is the Pure Sharpshooter. Every year you use the Pure Sharpshooter, you can look at the attribute screen and on paper it definitely doesn't look impressive. And each year it looks worse and worse on paper. But when you get into the actual game, it is one of the most useful archetypes ever. Look, I'm just saying if I'm playing on the park or the prime, I'm gonna want one of these on my team at all times. Not only does it help stretch the floor, but if shooting is harder this year, then it's gonna pay to have an archetype that can most consistently hit their shots and you can rely on them. So you can just take a look at the badges. They have a Hall of Fame corner specialist, Deep Range Deadeye, which the dev said is bound to activate more this year, so it's gonna be more helpful than it was last year. Limitless Range, which the dev said got a pretty big nerf this year compared to last year. Catch and Shoot, which is always one of the most useful badges in the game, and Free Throw Ace. Free Throw Ace is important because some of the big men in the game aren't even gonna have bronze free throw ace this year. So you could potentially, playing a Pro-Am game, hack the other player, put him at the free throw line, and there's a good chance he just goes one for two with a good release. So I'm just saying, late game, if there's one archetype you wanna pass the ball to to hit a free throw, it's this one right here. Of course, they got the tireless score on gold, the mid-range dead eye on gold, and the quick reflexes on gold, which I assume is gonna help pick off interceptions, maybe? What does that do, that, that badge? I don't think this is gonna be the best build in the game by any stretch of the imagination. I just think it's gonna be the most useful build. You're gonna need shooters on your team, that's all I know. The next archetype, and you guys know this if you watch my videos, I'm really excited about is the pure glass cleaner. I don't know what it is about glass cleaners this year. I am incredibly excited for them. Well, I do know what it is. We saw the gameplay, right? And I'm not talking about the prelude gameplay. That's all beefed up and it's not actual sliders when you get in the game. I'm talking about the gameplay I reviewed in the video a few days back. I see a lot of benefit to having glass cleaners, ladies and gentlemen. I think that they will be offensively a liability because you're not, you're not gonna be able to shoot threes in the corner like you did last year just because you have hot spots and some boosts. You're gonna have to put your glass cleaners on offense 18 feet away on the mid range and just get and ready for an easy little Jimmy. But where I see this build dominating is just getting you three and four shot attempts because they're always coming down with rebounds. And then, God forbid, you get the takeover badge with the glass cleaner and it tells you where the rebound is gonna lie the second the shot goes up, you're beating everybody to the boards. And then at that rate, you could just start to chuck up shots with sharpshooters and shot creators and playmakers and the glass cleaner will always be there. I really recommend you go back and watch that video I did breaking down the gameplay a few days ago because it really, really outlined why not only is strength gonna be important, but your rebounding rating. Because even if you're in bad position this year, you can fight your way through a whole lot of bullshit to come down with rebounds. Like sharpshooters, glass cleaners don't have a ton of badges, but the badges they do have are very useful. Put back King Hall of Fame, break starter, hustle rebounder, which I assume is gonna be one of the most useful badges in the game. Of course, bruiser is always annoying when you're setting a million screens. Hall of Fame brick wall, and that doesn't even include charge card. Somehow you get rim protector on gold. I didn't see that happening. So now you're, you're, you're nice on offense and defense on the boards. You have the strength, but now you can apparently swat everything away as well. And then they even laced you with like a posterizer on silver. So if you're down low, you're getting those contact dunks. Oh, oh, oh man. Listen, if you're, here's what I'll say. If you're a glass cleaner, send me a tweet. I'm gonna be looking for some glass cleaners to play with. And the final build I want to talk about in this one, in no way did I see coming, was a pure lockdown. Ladies and gentlemen, what happened to the lockdown defenders this year? Not only is stealing buffed from last year, which I don't like, but if you have a lockdown this year, I know you're gonna think I'm exaggerating because I use big words. You will get a ton. You will be picking the ball off and intercepting so many times. And probably the reason I'm most excited about this build is because if you max out the three point rating for like an average lockdown, it's gonna be around 55, which isn't good. This is a player, and I'm gonna say this because off rip, I don't think this player is gonna be good. But for the people who grind, I think the lockdown for grinders is gonna be the best build in the game. If you grind and unlock all your three point attribute caps, you will have around a 65 open shot three. And then you might think, Agent, I don't think I can hit consistently with a 65 open shot three. I don't have a lot of shooting badges. 
but you do. I don't know why you do, but you do. If you look down here and scroll down, of course you have the pick and dodge, the pick dodger, defensive stopper, chase down artist, all the stuff you'd expect from a lockdown. But I do not know why they did this. They gave pure lockdowns silver corner specialist. So I know some of the devs were talking about how they wanted to buff the offense for lockdowns this year to, so that more people start to create the build. But I don't know, I might have think they went too far giving him silver corner specialist. Not only will you be menacing to all those play sharps trying to jibble around you or those point guards, the shot creators, but on top of that, you're telling me on offense, you won't be a complete liability? And if you want to play the safe route and you're not great at timing your jump shots and you think 65 is too low, you can go with a lockdown primary and sharpshooter secondary. Now, the badges on this aren't as good. And with the lockdown, badges are everything. So I would probably just recommend the pure. But I know I was looking for lock sharps all last year on the Pro-Am. And I couldn't find one. There's not many of them out there. But it's a very, very useful build. A lot like sharpshooters, on paper, it doesn't really look like it's as good as a pure lockdown. But when you actually get in the game and play with him, Oh my God, to have the consistent three pointer on top of a player who can lock down and stop that five out cheese is so useful. So all of the Hall of Fame badges except quick reflexes, <laughs> surprise, surprise, gets relegated to a gold. So you don't have them on Hall of Fame, that's an L. But you still keep the silver corner specialist and you get a bump to your shooting attributes. On top of that, for whatever reason, they gave him a deep range dead eye of silver a limitless range of silver, a catch and shoot of silver. <laughs> so depending on which way you wanna roll with it, I am so excited to play with and hopefully get on an account and try out one of these builds. I don't know if I'm gonna make one because I can't see myself grinding all the way to, to, to with the lockdown, I can't see it. I might just like buy it off somebody. I won't, you know what? No, I won't, because that's against TOS, and I would never do such a thing. Aww. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Those are the builds that I believe will be the most overpowered come NBA 2K19 launch. Do yourself a favor, come on NBA 2K Lab. I'm not getting paid to say it. I'm just saying you could investigate here and get some more information the way I'm doing on Twitter and on the website. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, because I'm going to be dropping a steady dose of these 2K19 videos. I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.